keep watching if you want to learn how to wire in a low cost inverter to your TV, your AC outlets, your microwave, and your fridge. So the way that this setup is going to work, at least for my trailer, I'm going to keep the GFIs on and the microwave on to run on the battery. Everything else off, but I still have all my DC stuff coming in on solar on the batteries on the front. That makes it so I can watch TV and the microwave. And basically I'm just without air conditioning unless I flip the breakers on and turn on a generator and plug it into shore power. And that way you can watch a movie without the annoying sound of a generator. Here's my latest inverter setup. I've wired it up to the WIFCO model WFT-130 transfer switch. And I've wired the inverter up on the generator leg because this trailer does not have a generator hooked up to it or pre-wired. Everything just plugs into shore power to feed energy to the transfer switch. And then what you have is two wires here. One goes out to the control panel where the breakers and fuses are. And then the other one goes out to the shore power plug on the side. And the third set is what's wired up, the black and white wire inside of here, to the generator portion. And I put a 15 amp plug. And that's because um, we're not going to run more than 15 amps with this style of inverter. And it only has outlets on it. So anyways, let me show you what this inverter can do. Okay, so to use this setup, you need to turn the switch on. Make sure we're breakered at 150 amps. GoWise has this little remote panel here, so you have to hold it down. If you have too many breakers on that have things on on them, this guy will start beeping like crazy, and you'll have a fault, and you'll need to actually turn the breaker, or sorry, the shutoff off on it. So now that we've flipped it, at some point, you'll hear this transfer switch do a loud little click, and it says right on there that it has a... 30 to 60 second time delay. There's also a switch inside of there, a dip switch on the circuit board. They can turn to on so it's an immediate transfer and I don't think I would recommend that. Hopefully you just heard that, but now we should be feeding AC power to everywhere inside of the RV that has the breaker on. Inside the panel, I actually had everything off and I still have my main batteries hooked up to this. So if I flip this converter on, It'll start transferring energy from that battery to the front batteries. So you always want to have the converter off whenever you're going to run an inverter. It has to be wired in pre-transfer switch. Anyways, um, coming up here to the refrigerator, uh, you've got outlets, microwave. The AC is always going to need to be off because that 1500 watts can't handle it. But everything else, right, we should be able to run. Let's turn the fridge on and we'll turn it on and it flips immediately over to this green light now the fridge is running off of ac power but i want it to run off of propane so i'm going to turn my refrigerator off and you can see i'm back over to propane and dc power okay i flipped the microwave uh breaker switch on and i'm going to go over to timed cook and let's say one minute now you have to turn the power level down at level 10 this thing will never work so at level one on a 1500 watt inverter you can run your microwave so you can see it's going to sit there and run and cook it would immediately go into alarm if it couldn't handle it so here's what happens then if i try to run it i'll just push time to cook Boom, it actually took the surge that time. That's very surprising. Now we're in alarm. You can hear how the fault light went out, but it basically exceeded the surge. And so in order to reset everything, you basically have to turn it back off, let it wind down and do its thing, and then turn the, the main breaker back on and then return the inverter on and then you've got to actually run the transfer switch or wait for it to kick over to be able to use the AC power again.